Welcome to On the Issues. I'm Phoenix City Councilwoman Thelda Williams. Throughout the city, residents have joined block watches to work with Phoenix police to fight crime in their neighborhoods. On today's show, we'll learn how residents can get involved in block watches and become active partners to keep their neighborhoods safe. But first, Phoenix has emerged as a national leader in the efforts to end domestic violence. Each October, we paint Phoenix purple to raise awareness and give victims hope and encouragement. I'm here with Mo Geigels from Phoenix Human Services Department to learn more about our city's efforts to end domestic violence. Mo, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Councilwoman. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Nobody will notice. It. That's true. So anyway, <laughs> tell us what we, I know we have worked on this, what? Is this our fifth year? Uh, actually, we've been doing this since about 2003 when we first, 2013, I mean, when we got uh, the domestic violence roadmap on, on the map with the city council and the mayor. Oh, I thought it was longer than that, but I know you have been extremely busy as well as um, all of the staff uh, bringing this forth. We, know we have five pillars. Yes. And we have been very active in this community and working with all the other agencies as well. So tell us what's the latest. Yes, well, you know, we've always worked on domestic violence as a city, but, but with mayor and council, you know, three years ago approximately saying we are going to become a leader, then we really got the community together. We started working with over 50 organizations, and now uh, they're helping guide us with, through your guidance with the council and the mayor and really trying to make a difference. And so we, it kicks off, of course, with October, and that being uh, a Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And so painting Phoenix Purple is... Uh, one of the things that we've worked on so hard. And what are the, the, one of the great things is that it's not just the city. Uh, now the, the county is painting uh, purple. Uh, the state is encouraging and, and turning purple. Uh, so really it's a statewide effort. And uh, it's great to know that the city uh, was maybe the incubator, but now everybody's joining in. And that's really what it takes is the whole community. From the airplane, it ought to look like a purple sea of light when people come in at night because I understand our surrounding communities are also lighting up their city halls in purple. Exactly and that all comes from awareness and that's where we've uh, we've done a really excellent job but we've got to do more than that and it's really the action and so with working with the community and working with advocates like yourself who have these ideas about how we can make things better uh, we are moving forward. Uh, we have now through uh, funding that we received from the Victims of uh, Crime Act uh, uh, federal government, we've been able to put more advocates on board as an example and put them out in the field where they're closer to uh, the victims and closer to police, be able to do orders of protection uh, through iPads and remotely. These are things that we, you know, just a few years ago, we may not even have thought of, but because of all the awareness uh, that all these campaigns and everybody's uh, care and concern has brought forth, uh, all of these things are improving. I, I think it's very important that we continue to really publicize uh, because the first step is leaving. And, and that's quite traumatic. It's very horrific and dangerous. And letting people know that there are are people who are willing to extend their hand and help you uh, through the whole process, I think is extremely important. Yeah, you know, it's just, uh, it's incredible when you think that one out of four women, one out of seven men have had some kind of domestic violence in, in, their, in their lives. And, and even more uh, concerning is that uh, every 44 minutes in the state of Arizona, a child uh, witnesses some kind of domestic violence act. When you think about it in those terms, it's, it's really a daunting um, a challenge for, for us all. Uh, but you know, you need to, if, if you see something, you need to say something, you need to try to do something. But if you're in that situation, please, uh, you, they need to know that there, there are people who care, people who are willing to step up and step out with them. And it's a scary situation, uh, but you're not alone. And that's a message I, I would like everybody to know that you're not alone. There are people here that have been through these things, that have studied to help, we, help you. And that's what we want to, uh, to do is to try to get our arms around this. We certainly want to prevent it, but when it's happened, we need to take care of it. Glad you brought that up because I think I was impressed that you were able to get a grant that you can now go into high schools and junior highs. 
Well, I know that's been one of your passions and you've made it very clear to us uh, that uh, we need to re re get down the stream further. And uh, working with the high schools and now the middle schools, we're in the, the community colleges. Um, it, it's just, you know, trying to create an awareness that if, if this is happening around you or, if, or you know, in dating violence in, in your shoes, as an example, we've done over 80 uh, sessions last year with hundreds of high schoolers. And 95% of them in the exit survey that ASU helped us, Arizona State University helped us develop, 95% of them say that they now uh, know uh, that more about this and, and how to avert uh, dating issues. And so uh, hopefully through those kinds of efforts, talking to children and talking to high schoolers and middle schoolers, uh, there's a prevention that can, can stop things in the future. Uh, we need to deal with the issues right now, but we need to do uh, all that we can to try to avoid any of us getting into that situation. Because we know it's generational. If you witnessed it when you're a kid, you're more prone to experience it in an adult life. Absolutely, and that, that, that is really true about so many social issues, and it's certainly true of domestic violence. If, if you've witnessed it, if you've been in, in that kind of a situation, really, you know, when we're young, we, we're, we're taught things, and we don't even know what's right or wrong. We're taught them, and so we accept them. Uh, but uh, we, there's ways out of this. We do not have to uh, live those, uh, those scenes in our life. Uh, if we can get the right kind of help, if we can uh, really get on the right track, those trajectories can be changed in the future. And that's what we try to do uh, when we get into the schools and, you know, teachers are embracing this. Uh, you know, the, the school districts have a lot on their plate uh, to, to really give to their students. And uh, the fact that they're embracing this means that they understand the importance and we couldn't be more appreciative. Well, I, I congratulate you uh, and your staff. You're doing a wonderful job on this. But I want to go back to services. Uh, we, I know we've always had uh, emergency shelters where a family can go. And some of them, you can take your pets with you because I know that could be a hang up uh, because the pet gets threatened and we all love our pets. Uh, but what happens when the time's up in the emergency shelter? Do we provide a resource then? Well, and see, that's one of the, the places where we can make improvements. And so we'll be talking to you and the rest of the city council and the mayor about uh, uh, some of the city's vouchers to put forth to the effort of domestic violence and then also looking at the efforts of human trafficking where, where we can help uh, individuals uh, get into a safe place, a safe space uh, where they can really uh, work on their lives and hopefully not need us in the future. One of the things that we don't want to create is dependency. So while we, we need to huddle around and be supportive and be united, we also need to be always moving forward and, and moving on, if you will. And so uh, we're going to be, uh, you know, hopefully getting the okay to move forward with, with uh, uh, vouchers so that we can make a difference. And, but it takes the community. So, you know, we can provide some resources, but we have to ra wrap ar around the, the community as a whole. And that's really why one of the things about this particular campaign is uh, so uh, warming uh, to all of our hearts that it really is an entire community from the coalition uh, to end domestic violence and sexual assault to the individual agencies that provide the services. So yes, that is a critical area of the housing. How do we move on? Emergency shelter is great for an immediate emergency, but then how do you piece the life back together uh, for the individual and for the kids involved and move them on and help them move on? That's really what they want. You know, domestic violence uh, has been a topic for ever. Uh, I don't think there's probably a family in America that couldn't poke their finger somewhere and say, yeah, it happened to my family. Um, but I think it's the first time I have ever seen such a collaboration of not only the services, the police departments, but all outside of Phoenix. I mean, we've got, the, you and I sit on the coalition, the Maricopa County Coalition, uh, which is almost every servant agency, every city, every police department, the sheriff's office, and how we are coordinating is very impressive to me. Um, you want to talk a little bit about some of the accomplishments we're making on that, on, you know, how we're all going to be using the same forms, etc. Yes, exactly. That's really one of the things, uh, as you mentioned, is so important is that 
Uh, it, it's not enough for us as, as a city, even though we're a very large city, to, to be all into ourselves. And so, it, especially in our region, you sit on the, the uh, Domestic Violence Regional Council and the mayor on the MAG Council. And so, you know, all of these efforts with other, other leaders across, across the cities and across the nation, I mean, across the region, uh, we, we find that we're, we're starting to talk more about common forms, as you indicated, common systems, uh, even police departments being able to see things across jurisdictions. All of that is so important as we try to work together. And the more and more that we have these conversations, the more and more that we uh, really talk to each other and not be siloed, uh, that's when it starts to make the difference. Recently, when we received the uh, Victims of Crime um, uh, funding, we worked with other um, uh, other agencies to to make sure that we were what are we all applying for uh, and how do we complement each other and how do we make sure that we're in tandem with each other uh, usually in most situations there's all all of us want to help and we're all uh, applying for and trying to get funding for our niche but if we're not threaded if we're not really connected we lose the the power of of the caring that we have so that's one of the most critical things uh, if we are not not together, we will never solve it. Uh, and we know that uh, for, for every family that we help, there's, there's someone else that something's happening to. We have to be ready. We have to be ready. I, you know, I, the devil's in the details, especially when it comes to this topic, um, because there are so many pieces to it. Uh, it's not just putting them in a shelter, uh, or even back further, uh, getting an order of protection uh, working with the JPs, because they issue many, many of, of the orders of protection. But what does that mean? Are you really protected? The answer is no. That's right. And it, that, that's well, what a great point. And, you know, we're trying to do more with orders of protection and, and a domestic violence court, actually, a court specifically for these kinds of issues so they can be addressed. I know the uh, legislature was working with us uh, to strengthen those laws. And I, I was fascinated to think that the courts don't speak to each other. Police are not aware when the orders of protection are issued. I mean, you would think in this electronic age that boom, it's shot off, everybody knows. It doesn't happen. I know, I wish it was that simple, but you know, because of the leadership of uh, the mayor and council and, and many others, of course, but what I think you've helped us do is uh, you know, we're in our work and we've got our head in our work and you've, you've helped us pull it up and, and see across the landscape. And uh, when you're doing the work, uh, it's so easy to miss those things. And so that's why the coordination, I believe, is starting to happen and happen at a greater clip than ever before because we've, we have our heads up and we're seeing each other and we're understanding how we have to thread and connect. Well, I just want to thank you for all of your work and your leadership on this. Uh, you are playing a key role, as you have for a long time, and uh, I, I'm always so delighted. You are always willing to, to listen to some of my crazy ideas and uh, help me sort through them and work to make uh, them workable. So um, I'm very excited about this. I want to encourage everyone to wear purple in October. That's our big That's month. Right. I had it on yesterday. Good for you. <laughs> And I have to plan my whole month of October, uh, but it's a true good symbol, and I think it keeps driving the message home. So, again, thank you very much for being on the show today. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much, Councilwoman. Up next, we'll learn about block watches and how they're helping residents and police work together to fight neighborhood crimes. Hello, I'm Phoenix Councilwoman Thelda Williams. The city's Paint Phoenix Purple campaign is underway to increase community awareness about domestic violence. One in four women and one in seven men is a victim of domestic violence. It affects all of us, but it is preventable. If you or someone you know is a victim, call the number on the screen. Phoenix is committed to becoming a national leader in preventing and ending domestic violence. Throughout Phoenix, block watches are uniting residents to become active partners with their police to keep our neighborhoods safe.
There are great resources to help residents start block watches, and we're going to learn more from my next two guests. Joining me now is Phoenix Police Sergeant Scott Kane and Cactus Rim Block Watch Leader Frank Steinmetz. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. I know you both have been very active in block watch and supporting neighborhoods. And I guess I'll ask you, Frank, how long have you been doing this? We started uh, the block watch in 2006. Uh, we were prior to that a fight back and we've been involved with it ever since. We, uh, our housing area actually was built in 1969 and 1970. So by this time it was 30 years old, 35 years old when I got involved in the block watch. And what have you benefited from? I'm sorry? What's the benefit of being in a block watch? Well, number one, it helps us uh, keep our community safe. We've had great uh, success with uh, other community groups like Cactus Park Community Alliance helping us. They've helped us form individual street block watches. Then they, those individual street block watches work with us as a master block watch for the one hole and square mile area. Uh, the police have been extremely supportive. And then when we have the gain events each year, that gets the people who don't necessarily come to the monthly meetings or quarterly meetings. It gives them an opportunity to come and meet the police, meet our CAOs especially, and then they go and meet with their neighbors. And this gives us a more community-involved policing action. And from the police department's perspective? Uh, well, specifically uh, talking about gain first, uh, Gain Getting Arizona Involved in Neighborhoods is the statewide uh, crime prevention celebration that occurs in, in October. And that is for the, you know, to help the communities get involved and to promote uh, safety, awareness, and unity within, within the neighborhoods. And for a person that's just trying to get involved, uh, that, that wants to get involved in, in the neighborhood, Gain is an excellent place to, to get started and to meet some of these resources. Uh, speaking to, to Blockwatch itself, Blockwatch is the cornerstone for, for community policing and it's a great way to encourage people to meet their neighbors so that they can help be the eyes and the ears for the police department and collaborate with us and problem solve. Good. So it works. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> Glad to hear that. Uh, Talk about gain events. I know we have uh, a couple big ones coming up. Do you want Frank, tell about the one at Cortez Park. Cortez Park, uh, we have four individual block watches plus two uh, large um, com our apartment communities that are going to be involved in it. And it will be uh, the largest one that I've been involved with at, the, at all. We've got close to 60 vendors. There will be bounce houses for the kids. Uh, there will be a couple of marching bands, high school marching bands there competing. There's going to be some uh, cultural events there, dancers, uh, different types of activities uh, relative to uh, sp uh, different groups that are involved with the block watch. Uh, p and Phoenix Neighborhood Patrol is going to work with the block watches and giving out safety information. We'll also have uh, Walgreens are going to have uh, some promotion there that they're working with. Several other companies are going to have uh, immunization available for children, for school age children. So it's gonna be a very large and uh, activity. And it's on a Saturday. On Saturday, October 29th. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, we'll have quite a few people involved in it this time. I, I went to one or two of the meetings and, and I, the meetings continue to grow and the people involved. It, yes. It's very impressive. So, but as a police department, I know you go from one event to the other. How many do you think we have? In, in the Black Mountain Precinct alone, and, and now it, all, the, all the events aren't registered just yet. There's still some time to register. We're looking at about 14 events throughout the course of October. Uh, they're gonna kind of, they vary in scale. Some of them will be uh, 
will be relatively small, and then we have others that are you know, slotted to potentially have a thousand, uh, a thousand attendees, which would be very impressive. It is. They're always fun, though. I agree. Uh, I'm looking I'll... forward to following. <laughs> <laughs> We, we can't tend to meet up at some of these events, don't we? Absolutely. So I always laugh and say on game day, I grazed my way through the city because the food's always terrific too. So, well, tell us what else, how do you promote it as a police department? What, what, what's your partnership in this? As far as, as uh, promoting gain or we're talking com promoting block watch oh. in general, uh, with the promoting block watch, we're trying. We, we're constantly trying to get out into into communities. A lot of times, the community action officers will go uh, door to door or work with. In some cases, we've worked with businesses trying to create uh, community alliances or specifically in the neighborhoods, uh, block watches. And a lot of times, too, when we get, uh, we'll have communication through the council's office about people wanting to get involved in the neighborhoods and then we can reach out to them and help them get started creating this kind of this collaboration with their neighborhood and the police department. Other times some people don't even know hey I want to be involved and they don't realize they're part of already an existing block watch or alliance so we can help channel them into the particular group that they need to be associated with. I know I my district's large enough and I have two police precincts. I have um, Black Mountain uh, and you have the Black Mountain Alliance. Correct. And then we have the Cactus Park Alliance. Uh, so for the southern end and the west side of the district, uh, they are very active and I really applaud all their efforts because they really try to be a support team to individual block watches. Uh, and I know you work pretty closely with them, I think, don't you? Yeah, the, the Black Mountain Community Alliance all is, is a forum for all the precinct block watches to attend. The uh, commander, Commander Morin shows up, we'll have the lieutenant there, the community action officers are all there. It meets, it meets once a month. They're a few months off in the summer and, and a month off during the holidays, but it is an excellent, another excellent resource for people to go to in order to meet uh, your community action officers, get associated with your block watches and get information from the Black Mountain Community Alliance on uh, grants, upcoming meetings, possible training, things along those lines. Block watch signs, I mean, Absolutely. all kinds of goodies they give They're, out to promote yep, themselves. Every, every, every month. Right, and I know Cactus does the same thing. Right, Cactus Park Community Alliance also mirrors yours. Uh, so they're constantly looking at helping the schools promote safety programs for the children. They're constantly looking for other areas where they can develop a block watch. Once the block watch is uh, started, they follow up, they offer the support to them. And here again, it's a good step to go up to Phoenix Neighborhood Patrol once you're in a block watch the, and the Phoenix Neighborhood Patrol is another very good way of uh, going through your community and helping promote safety. What is it? Phoenix Neighborhood Patrol. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's a group. Uh, mm -hmm. When I went, we had a eight hour course. It's a trick question. And it's, now, <laughs> it's now a four hour course where you can go in and learn about the various ordinances the safety aspects, how to go through the community, not to be a police officer, but how to spot possible problem areas and how to go and report it to the correct agency. It need to be NSD, Neighborhood Services, the Streets Department, the Police Department, a CAO might be a, a home that you see uh, somebody having difficulty getting in and out of their house. It's a good way of getting a hold of a CAO officer and say, hey, this person needs some assistance. Can you go and get a welfare crew in or do a welfare check with it? Uh, these are all things that we learn or taught at the Phoenix Neighborhood Patrol class. Uh, I personally think it should be 8 or 12 or 14 hours like we did, but they seem to be getting the basics in the four-hour course. And uh, I highly recommend it to everybody that if you're involved in a block watch or even if you're not involved with a block watch, get a hold of the precinct, get a hold of the PNP uh, coordinator and ask about attending a class. 
even if you just go to the class, you'll learn things about your neighborhood that you never knew. And you, this will help you make your neighborhood better and increase uh, the value of your property once you get your neighborhood back up to where it's supposed to be. I, I remember when it started. It was very controversial. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, Cactus uh, Precinct was the first one to launch it, and uh, it was very successful. I, in fact, uh, even a couple crimes in progress were found. Uh, and I think some hot cars were spotted, right. which helped tremendously to get police department to adopt it you know, universally across the city. So how do you work with them? Oh, I, think, I think it's important to remember with what you were saying that the, as a police department, we can't be everywhere and we want to encourage uh, community members to be involved and to contact us when they see suspicious activity. But Phoenix Neighborhood Patrol is like we said, like, uh, like we were talking about here, it's kind of the next tier for block watch. And with this additional training that's offered to the residents, it's just, it enhances the collaboration between the police department and the residents of Phoenix in order to help them be more effective in, in their communicating with us and, and how they work with the police department. You know, I think in today's world, block watch is one of the successes for Phoenix police. You are well respected in this community and we have not had the troubles that other major cities have had. And I truly believe we have had a long 20 year history, a partnership working in neighborhoods and communities. Uh, and the citizens have always been very supportive. Uh, a couple times they've went and voted for extra tax money to make sure we could continue to, to, to beat people up. But uh, I just really, really believe um, that we have a community spirit with our officers uh, that's different than other places. And so I give you credit because it takes both, it takes a partnership for police and for neighborhoods to, to accomplish this. But I'm so proud of all of you. It, you're the shining example out here in this world <laughs> right now, guys. Congratulations. Another way that if somebody wants to just to get started and being active in the community is call the precinct, find out when coffee with a cop is. Oh, that's right. It's a very basic, it's informal. You go to a restaurant or uh, a coffee shop and the CAOs are there. Normally the commanders show up if they can and it gives you an opportunity to meet the officers in an informal environment and gives you a chance to talk to them in an informal environment and ask questions, get answers. And very, very basic way of starting to get involved. Coffee with a cop once a month and it's a very good activity and a very good way to get started. I'd agree that it's very, it's a very, it's a very low key way to uh, to reach out to the neighborhood to get involved right. and find out you're just regular people. But there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you both for being here. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. That's all the time we have for this month's on the issues. If you have any questions or comments about this show, call my office at 602-262-7444, or visit my website at phoenix.gov/district1. We'll see you next time on the issues. <laughs>